So uh, reputation damage seems like a hard thing to measure, doesn't it? Is that something where you think uh, not only is it hard to measure, but you don't have any data? Actually, I know something about reputation damage. Uh, this is the one area where you have all the data. Do you believe me? You have all the data. And I know this because there's no such thing as secret damage to reputation. By definition, every event of damage to reputation was public. Do you agree? It's all publicly available data or it wasn't damage to reputation. All right? So we can ask this question. We can say, what are some things that we would expect to see after a damage to reputation type event? What do you think you would see? Revenue changes, churn of customers, possibly stock prices. I like stock prices because that's more immediate real-time feedback, right? Whereas the other ones, we've done analysis on the other ones too, you have to wait for a quarterly report or something, so it's a little bit lower resolution data. But you can look at stock prices, so let me show you something here. Here's three charts of three companies which may or may not have had uh, a major breach that they reported publicly. Can you tell which of these had a publicly reported major breach? Zero in on it. You can keep it to yourself. Who'd pick the first one? Anybody? Who'd pick the second one? Who'd pick the third one? Who would pick more than one? All right. Now, for those of you who picked one, zero in on where you think it actually happened. And so the years there are a little bit of a hint, okay? Just look at that chart and see if you can pick when it happened. Well, here's the answer. It's all three of them. And none of those red lines are where you thought of it, are they? Anybody guess any of those red lines exactly right? <laughs> no. In fact, what you observe after the public announcement of major data breaches, what we observe is the stock goes down half the time. It goes up half the time and with an, a magnitude that's consistent with historical volatility. It's almost like you can't even tell that an event occurred. So what's really happening here? It's not the case that the events cost nothing. What really happens? If you had a major data breach, what would you do? Do you sit back and wait for the worst to happen? What do you think you would do? Wouldn't you jump through all kinds of flaming hoops to take the best care you can of everyone who was damaged? Get services like All Clear ID. Make sure you've got the best fraud detection. I don't get any kickback from All Clear ID, by the way. But use a service like that and get the best uh, fraud detection you can get. Um, you announce publicly that you're doing all of these upgrades. You're trying to alleviate the concerns of all your stakeholders, your shareholders, your customers, your employees, right? Isn't that what you're doing? Aren't you taking all those actions? But those actions are not free, right? Those all cost something to make major commitments to reinvigorate your entire cybersecurity apparatus, to make sure you're taking care of all your clients and so forth. Um, and on top of that, you still have legal liabilities and so forth. Now, the cost of these things that you do to uh, alleviate the bigger losses, my co-author Richard Searson and I on the fourth book called those penance projects. He's a Catholic, so he came up with the penance project idea. So penance projects. Penance projects are the things that you spend money on to avoid the bigger losses. That's a real loss. And I would say that's what you're actually forecasting when you're forecasting damage to reputation. You're forecasting the cost or the amount of money that you'd be willing to spend at that point to head off the bigger losses. Now, there's still a chance that those might fail, but historically speaking, it looks like there's a lot of evidence, and there's been bigger studies than this, by the way. There's been large published studies, some of which I refer to in the book, actually, that have looked at a large number of these cases, and they just don't see a relationship between stock prices. Has anybody heard stock prices as the thing that you're trying to forecast after a major data breach? That stock price drops were one of the costs? We just don't see any evidence for that. Now, it might be the case that for firms like Experian and so forth that might be a bigger impact because that's kind of their job to a certain degree, all right? But otherwise, we just don't see that.